This is Rupert from RJ Blackwalls. Um, basically, uh, I get asked this question all the time. Uh, how do I clean my rifle? And what process should I use? Um, loads of people do have loads of different ideas. We've got a process here we think works really well. And it's something I just want to go through through, through with you. Um, one of the, the crucial aspects about cleaning your rifle is not to use gun oil. Gun oil down a rifle barrel is a massive no-no. So effectively, the only time you want to use gun oil on a rifle barrel is to, um, to put it into storage for long term. Um, basically, if you spray gun oil down your rifle barrel, you will create a layer down the barrel. And with that, you basically, as the bullet's been pushed out, you're going to increase the pressure. In fact, in the old days, the proof house used to spray the bullets with a real thick oil uh, to increase the pressure to put them through proof on uh, certain cartridges. So you just dip the whole round. Um, anyway, so going forward through this a little bit, the process that we advise. So when you're shooting, you should always try and clean your rifle. Um, after every shot, even, even if you've just fired a shot or even if it's just got a bit damp, the most crucial thing is to get rid of the prime residue and the powder residue um, out of the barrel. Now, that is the most corrosive part. Copper, which is obviously on the bullet, and lead, which is on the bullet, is not corrosive to the barrel. But some calibers will need that removing after a period of time. Um, so this caliber actually is a 308, and to be honest, 308 is quite a, um, a, a relaxed sort of caliber. It's not too high pressure, um, and uh, it, it's a bit more forgiving than, say, something like a 1.7 or a 22250. Um, which is you know a hotter, faster burning caliber. And you will you will have to um, remove the copper with a decent solution um, on a more regular basis. Um, our rule of thumb for cleaning uh, is, is that we say every forty rounds is always a good point to, to sort of think and do a, a thorough clean of your barrel. Um, in the interim, um, a bore snake is a great solution to try and uh, do some cleaning. But the crucial factor of the ball snake, for it to be, to, for it to work well and to keep your rifle accurate, and for you to not have those random flying bullets after a, a clean, is a lot of people, what they do is they spray the ball snake with oil or the cleaning solution. Now with that, you've effectively just pulled a layer of oil through the barrel, thus increasing the pressure, thus then could, causing, could cause accuracy issues. Um, so we've got here, we've got a little mouse that's come in. Um, and this little rifle um, is basically um, hasn't had a clean and we'll start a cleaning process on it. So I'm just going to remove the bolt safely um, and take the mag out so you can see it's all clear and safe. The rifle has been checked over beforehand for safety um, and we'll start a cleaning process. A lot of people, um, you can use a, a bore guide, it's not a bad thing to, to, to use. On this I'm not going to bother using a bore guide. Uh, but um, it, it does help, especially on the smaller calibers, you, you know, going, especially when you're going up the throat, uh, you don't want to damage the throat of the barrel um, and a bore guide helps you just to give it a bit more alignment what's, you know, down, down the rifle. So first things first, the, the main brush that we use is we use a phosphorus brush first. You know, you don't want to put any solution on here. So if you put a copper cleaner or oil on there, you just don't want to do it. Uh, copper cleaner especially, because what it'll do is it'll make it go green, hard and solid, and basically after, after one or two goes, your brush will be kaput, and you'll just have to throw it in the bin and get another. So what we do is we use a copper brush first, and we'll push the copper brush all the way through, all the way back, all the way through, and basically what that's for is to break up the powder residue uh, and the primer residue with inside the rifle so you can get to the raw rifling um, underneath and get to that copper copper layer. So we'll do that now. And we want to do that this is pretty grubby, this rifle, as you can see. There's still loads of powder residue coming out and primer residue coming out of the, of the barrel. And we're going to do that sort of half a dozen times. This is a pretty filthy rifle, so it might even need a few more. But we, can, we might, even at some stage through the cleaning process, we might need to repeat that. So 
I've used the, the, the copper brush, the phosphorus bronze brush, and now we're going to go on to a nylon brush. Now, the nylon brush is purely acting as a carrier for solution. Uh, because it's nylon, the solution won't attack it, and you know it allows you to scrub that solution and work it in the rifling. So what I'll do is I'm just going to put, I'm trying to do it carefully over here. Just watch some of these solutions can be quite corrosive, uh, and it's worth having a bit of a mat um, underneath to protect your furniture. So I'm just trying to do it so I don't lose too much solution as I'm putting putting it through, and we're just going to work that work that into the rifling. And the, the thing with these solutions is you don't want to just keep putting solution on patches all the time. Allow the solution to do some of its work. It's a bit like you know using a cleaning agent at home, like bleach or something like that. You don't just wipe it on and wipe it off. It's not going to allow it to actually react and do its job. So it's worth just leaving it for sort of 15, 10 or 15 minutes and, um, and allow it to eat all the muck inside. So because for the camera process, what I would usually advise is if you're, at if you're at home, get your rifle, stand it, muzzle down, put it like a cloth or something underneath, preferably white, so you can see all the muck drain out. Now what you're looking for, if you're seeing lots of blue coming out, that's the copper dissolving with inside the barrel and it's all coming out into a white cloth. So if, we, if, if you leave it muzzled down, it's a great way and also it stops any of the solution coming back into the action, or especially if you've got woodwork, because some of these, some of these solutions, if you've got wood, they can actually eat the finish um, and you can get little patches, especially around here where people have over put too much on. Um, so for the video, we're just going to tilt it upwards so and, and put a box underneath so you can see the solution go into a box um, in 10 minutes time. <laughs> So we've left this for 15 minutes, um, and as you can see, there's some uh, blue gunge coming out the barrel. There's obviously some black gunge, which is obviously some of the residue left from using the phosphorus brush um, here. Um, what we're gonna do now is, once you've used this nylon brush, we will use a jag, and we'll get a patch, and we'll attach a patch to the jag once I put the screw this on, we're just going to pull this down. And you get, now with the patches, you can buy patches for all different calibers. So this is obviously a 30 cal, we've got a 30 cal patches. Um, you can get them for all different calibers. Um, there's loads of different manufacturers out there doing, we're using a pro shot one. Um, and they seem to work pretty well. Um, so just put the patch through. And as you see, there's a load of muck coming out on that. So I'll leave that there in a the little pot. And we'll have to repeat this quite a few, num quite a few number of times. Um, and And you know, an, an, an important thing, just to sort of reiterate what we've been through, this, going through the first part of this video, is that after every time you shoot, you should put your bore snake through. And even like I said, even if the rifle gets damp or wet, it's just worth running it through. Especially, you know, especially us lot in the UK where we have moderators, um, we get condensation is quite a big build up around the moderator. Um, most of the rifle barrels are, uh, are, that come in to us that are you know, supposedly not shooting are generally through damage via the moderator. And it's not because the moderator is causing the damage, it's just because there's condensation from when the moderator's on and when the barrel heats up, the two cool at two different levels. So what you find is, is this last bit here pits a lot faster, which is where you get the moisture, the powder residue and the primer residue mix. And of course, the last you know, four to six inches, depending on the length of your moderator, 
you know, if you have to cut that back because it's got so badly pitted, that's pretty much destroyed your barrel. Um, so, and also your crown, the crown gets obviously eaten away. So it's to, just to spend a few seconds after, after an evening, you know, an evening stalking or hunting, um, pulling a ball snake through, it takes no time. And like I said, you know, you increase your the life of your rifle, um, you know, tenfold. Most rifle barrels, um, uh, obviously they have a, a slight variation in, in length, depending on the caliber and depending on how fast they're running and how hot they're, they're set up. Um, so like a 308, you know, if you clean it and maintain it well, you might still notice accuracy issues after around 5,000 rounds, depending on the barrel material. There's all kinds of variations between hammer forge uh, barrels. You might get a little bit more because it's slightly harder. Um, but you know, the hotter, the faster calibers like the one seven Remington, um, you know, your barrel life might be say, you know, depending on how well you clean and maintain it, say, you know, 2000 rounds. Um, so, and this is still coming out fairly grubby. Now, so what we have to do is, is to repeat the process again. So there's still muck coming out of that. So I'm not happy with that at the moment. So we use the little nylon brush and we'll put a bit more solution on it. And we're just gonna work that back in, in there and we'll repeat this, the process. And again, you know, obviously I'm doing this for a video. You can use uh, gun cleaning cradles. They're a really good system. Keep the rifle level and actually ideally keep the muzzle down. Try again, try and keep all the solution away. Um, so I'll just put this, this here underneath here for this video, just to tilt the muzzle down. And we'll just allow that to, to drain out. Um, now going back through cleaning around the action of the rifle, that's an area that you know, needs to be done. I've had it before where people go mad spraying oil around the action. Now, all you really want to do is you just want to, you want to, you can put a bit of oil and a bit of cleaner of some, some solution. This is just a pheromone cleaner. It's just, it's a, just a, it's a general, general sort of drying oil. So it doesn't leave too much like residue afterwards, but you know, squirt a little bit around the bolt. Just be careful not to put too much on because what you don't want to do is you don't want uh, the, the oil, going from the inside the action and then going onto the ammunition and then causing your problem with regarding the rounds picking up oil and then and then transferring that down into the barrel. And that's can awesome cause, I've had it before where the guard, people come in and say, oh, you know, I've, I've cleaned it, but you know, I haven't put any oil down the barrel. But then you look at the action, it's absolutely soaking in oil where the guy's gone mad. Um, and don't put too much oil, but you just want to wipe it all over you know, it's metal, it's moving metal components. So a little gentle film of oil round places is, is, is really good. And you can get little brushes and things like that. And you can work it in into various places just to try and scrape any muck that's gathered in there. And depending on the environment, if you're a dusty and sandy environment, um, you know, you do want to spend a bit of time trying to get all that grit out of your action. If you don't want it binding up on you, especially if you're hunting something which is, um, you know, could be quite dangerous. You, you want that rifle to work absolutely perfectly. If the rifle's getting to a stage where it really is, you know, you're starting to have issues, you obviously just want to get it to your local gunsmith and get them to have a strip it all down and give it a proper clean, strip the trigger mechanism out, take the barrel out, have a proper look, and he can properly wash it all out without damaging your stock, you know, especially if you've got a lovely wooden stock, you know, these chemicals and solutions, the action and everything will have to come out. And it's also worth getting your mounts checked. Now, even on a clean, you can just check your mounts, make sure there's no movement in your, in your rail, your bases, and if you've got rings, you know, just check those rings because you know after a bit of time, you know you're shooting, get a bit of vibration that can that can cause issues. Um, so it, it is worth just spending a little bit of time doing that. So um, hopefully now we've just just allowed a little bit more solution. I'm just trying to speed this up a fraction. Put some more, put some more patches. Few more patches down and we'll probably this this process in total time length you know for a, a decent clean can often take about you know 30 
30, 40 minutes. Um, and sometimes on some, you know, you can spend longer than that if it hasn't been done for a while. You see, that's all coming out really, really blue. And that shows that, you know, that we are getting into the copper. That last load of solution is really getting into that copper now and starting to take it out. Um, now, some calibers can be affected by a clean. Uh, it's really, you could get 10 rifles from one factory and one, one likes it clean and one likes it with a bit of extra copper. You can't, you know, there's no real true explanation for that. Um, I've often found is that if you clean it properly and you get keep no oil in there, you, are, you often only move zero very fractionally, often maybe half an inch to an inch at tops. It's very unusual. If you've, if you've somehow trans, transferred oil back in there, you can often throw your zero out quite dramatically and you can throw it out to maybe you know, two to three inches and, and sometimes more. I've known people have flyers because uh, they've got so much oil down there. But if you clean it properly and follow this process, you find your point of zero should not change dramatically, if not at all. Um, so, and it's, it's a little bit of time for you to get to know your rifle as well. So uh, every, every rifle is fractionally different and you try the process, check zero, and then if it doesn't move zero, you'll then have the confidence that the process is working well for your rifle. Um, but like I said, if in the interim, just use that ball snake uh, to get to get that powder and primer residue out if you don't have the time to use uh, to go into a full clean. So starting from the beginning, I'm just going to take these brushes off and do it in a sort of an order. Just to remind everybody, copper brush first, and that's to bust up the primer residue and the powder residue. Then we use a nylon brush, and that's to basically act as a carrier uh, to carry the solution and take it into the barrel and scrub it into the barrel. And then, then you use a jag to carry the patches and take all the muck out. And you wanna leave that at the end, you wanna make sure it's all dry and make sure there's no solution crept back in into the, into the action at all. Like I said, some of these solutions, you've gotta be careful, remember to remove them, because some of them can be actually a bit corrosive. Um, but just be careful solution. I like the more aggressive solution. This is a uh, um, eliminated bore cleaner we find from Bortec. We find that a really good solution. Um, it's, it's a slightly stronger solution than others, and that works really well. Um, so that's that's the sort of process. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and um, if you have any queries, please don't, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.